Hello, today we're going to show how we make increases. So you might call it a split. We call it a teardown because we're going to be tearing down this hive into multiple nucleus hives. What we're going to be making is four frame nucleus hives that fit in our little custom made four frame boxes. Now I typically tell my my newer buyers not to be making splits and not to be making too many increases because every time you make one there's more chance you're going to leave your hive weaker. However, everybody seems to want to make them so I'm going to show how I do it. Um, it's not for everyone but it works for us. These hives still have the apron bar in it. Uh, they've had enough treatment and just haven't got around to removing it out. Removing the strips. Want to come closer? You can see that there's a, there's a fair population in here. They're in the top box. They're making brood in the bottom. This is drone brood. They're hanging out in the bottom box, so so this is an, a fairly good hive at this time of year for making a split. So the first thing I do is I set it aside. And what I'm gonna do is put down one of our little nuke bottom boards, our nuke brood chamber box. right here. So the first thing I would like to do is find the queen. Normally we do not keep the queens. These are all approaching three years old, these queens, and we find them slightly less of, uh, productive and nearing the end of their useful life in any event. So I'll take a frame out. particular frame has cat brood, it's got lots of pollen, it's got some fresh nectar, I don't see any eggs on it, but this will go in towards the center, I'll do a quick look for my queen, and there she is, which is remarkably lucky for me to find it on the very first frame. I will put one frame of brood there. One frame of brood in this in this one. This particular frame has some calf brood, has different ages brood. I'm going to put that with the queen mother. So it has two frames with brood and eggs. Now, as I reach through here, nothing but honey in here. I'm going to add that. We're saving the queen today. Like I say, we don't always save them if they're getting old or not doing so well. So this right here, I don't remember where I put my lid, would be, will end up being a little nucleus side. I'll put the queen excluder on top to keep her there. Oh, that's where I have my lid. <laughs> and I continue. So right now I have one frame of, of brood. That one's not quite enough brood on it for, for what I need. I'll put this one in. Now has two frames with some brood. This one's mostly honey. This one is all honey. I have my second new chamber made up. Put another one up top. In this case, 
spraying my honey. Frame of brood. Really nice frame of brood. I'm going to add this frame of brood. And I'm going to give it a frame of honey. Number three is made up. So we're doing this in the middle of the day. A lot of the bees are out flying. We're building this exactly where the old hive sat. And later tonight, we're going to take these hives and set them down in a new location. Honey again. Each of these has two frames of brood, two frames of honey. Now I'm not likely going to leave it this high, but for the sake of this uh, video, another frame of brood. Some more brood. frame of honey and what I'm left with is one more frame of brood so I am if you look over here they're working on on the rest of the yard and sometimes somebody there might be short one frame of brood and since I know there's no queen on that frame I'm gonna hand it over to them and they can build their new but what I do need is a honey frame. Not a very pretty honey frame. But it will, uh, it has some drone brood on it. So part of the, the, uh, issue with this is you need a little open brood or you want a little open brood in order to maintain the bees when we move this to a new location we want those bees to pretty much stay in their hive so now if you look what we have i have one two three four five so we have the queen in the bottom under queen excluder. We're gonna take these five later tonight when all the bees that are out flying come home. They'll be full of bees. Each has two frames of brood. We'll give them a new bottom board and set them down in a new location. And then we're gonna pause for that. So this is the yard that we had set down three nights ago and dropped cells in. Um, as you can see, they're just they were where the truck is parked. Let's scan over to the truck. That's where they were originally. And we set them down in the same yard. Uh, just made everything distinctly different. So if we had left a couple of hives over there, they would have collected most of the bees and these things would have been short of bees. Right now, even though we've only moved it 20 feet, there was nothing for them to come back to. So they, they have made this their new home. You can see here, I put in a cell. This one actually is a couple days ago and, and I'm not certain it should have hatched by now. Uh, yep, it would have. 
Would have looked a bit better before I yanked it out. Do you see this little piece? Maybe you can't. It's a little trap door, I call it. So the virgin has hatched in this hive. Let me go check another one that didn't get quite so much time. Normally you want to put a cell in and that cell should be fairly ripe. So it should be hatching within a couple of days. If you, uh, if you don't put a cell in, I mean another method is to put in here's one that just hatched they're still cleaning it out so this this one should have hatched uh, well actually yesterday or, or early today so there's going to be a virgin in here when we are putting in cells ripe cells basically it's a cell it gets placed between two frames just pinch it together so it sits up there where the bees are and that the bees will keep it warm for the two days that it requires um, to hatch the virgin goes into here she goes out flying gets made it and uh, hopefully that's the start of a new hive for us so got 